Okay, so continuing down the path of testing out batteries, I'm looking at some double A's from EBL. This time these are rechargeable and they come with the recharger. So let's do an unboxing. This is what the charger looks like and the charger can handle double A's as well as triple A's and the triple A's go in kind of a little diagonally. These are fully charged and ready to roll. And then because before we did this test, we thought that there was a difference between the internal battery tray and external battery power, I went and got one of these AA battery holders and it's got a 5521 plug on the back of it. So I went and rated my stash and I have a 5521 to power pole adapter. So this will plug directly into the back of the radio and we will prove out or you know see what the numbers are like at any rate what is going on with batteries that are plugged in to the back of the FT818. We're going to do the same setup that we did before with the FT8 work using the DigiRig on the laptop and we're going to run as long as we can until we can't run no more. So let's get over there and get everything set up. Right, we have the FT818 plugged into the Z817 tuner, plugged into the laptop through the DigiRig, and we're gonna use the FT8 software to do our test. And as you can see, there is no power. And because there is no power, that means that we're not using the internal battery, we're not using external power. These are my notes from all of our tests so far. Let's start a new page. And now we need to get everything set up. So these are our batteries. This battery case is actually pretty decent. I might put like a little uh, retention strap or there's a spot in there for a screw. It does not come with the screw, but there's a spot in there for a screw where you can screw the battery thing shut. I think the screw wouldn't be as accessible in the field. There's an on-off switch so they won't drain while they're in your pack. So I'm gonna turn that to on and I'm gonna plug it in to the back of the radio. Okay, and the radio came on when we turned it on and we are showing 11.8 volts. Let's get our mode set up to digital. Let's get our software loaded. I'm gonna to have to switch configs. We are powered on at 12.38 p.m. And our hope is that this is gonna run for two and a half hours. Let's see what we get. I need to find a clear spot on the frequency. And then we need to start transmitting. All right, and we're off and we are getting the L2 blink. There was no power indicator. We're down to 10.3 volts. So let's do 10.3 volts. We're gonna stay on 20 meters. We finally got to start transmitting at 1240. So two minutes to set up, not bad. All right, we will be back when the test is over. And we're dark. Let's see what the results are here. Bring up a command prompt. All right, 12 contacts today. Let's write that down. All right, these were some pretty interesting results on these uh, EBL batteries. First off, it turns out that these are 3000 milliwatt hours and not 3000 milliamp hours. 3000 milliwatts is 2000 milliamps. So there's the answer to that. We lasted for an hour and 15, which was 12 QSO. So that's really, really close for an FT8 POTA. Probably would want to bring two sets of these. Batteries were fairly warm at the end was one of the observations that I had. And what else I thought was pretty fantastic was these batteries were really consistent right up until the end. I was checking every 10 minutes and then I started to check every five minutes. And then right when I made that decision to check every five minutes is when they died. I mean, the, the power curve on this was like, like that. So overall, not bad. I would like to see these have more than an hour and 15 minutes on 12 QSOs, but on voice, it probably wouldn't be too terrible. Here's what the map looks like of all the contacts that heard us, all of the people that heard us. So some of the, the better things about these batteries is they are USB rechargeable. And I think that's pretty neat. Maybe with a radio that drew less power, say a True SDX or a, a QDX or a QCX. It would probably work out really well with those two radios. Links for these batteries with the charger, as well as the battery tray with the 5521 adapter on it. This will probably fit into a 5525. Here is my QDX. Does it fit directly? Oh, it fits directly. Yeah, this will be a good match for this. Inside of this QDX, don't do this unless you wound it for 12 volts, or if you have put a buck converter in. So it takes 12 volts in, but it runs at nine volts internally. 
and currently we're getting 4.46 watts out of this guy. So we will do a battery test on this for sure, because this looks like an interesting, an interesting thing. Otherwise, there is a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.